Ruby, I suppose the countdown to Cheltenham's well and truly underway now. Can you feel the excitement around the yard as the days tick away? I suppose you can. Um, that's probably three weeks, but I mean, you know, the horses are all starting to work and, and build up, and you know, I suppose you're keeping your fingers crossed that the wheels don't fall off any. And things are obviously different for you this year, being based here full time now. Have you noticed much of a change in the build up, not being back and forth to England all the time? Yeah, I guess I can only pick the wrong one in Winnie Mullins' yard now. <laughs> um, no, I suppose it's been a bit different, but um, I'm fortunate enough that we've a lot of good horses here and a lot of horses going to Cheltenham with great chances. And how do you assess the strength of Willie's team overall? I mean, it's just grown and grown, hasn't it, over the last few years to the point where it's it's really at a, a serious stage now? It is, yeah, but I suppose every year we've gotten a little bit, or Willie's gotten a little bit bigger and um, we have come a good quality of horses. And I suppose when you're getting into that, into that level, we've we've great owners as well who are able to to, to finance buying big, um, good horses. So, uh, you know, it, it's a great place to be to be involved in, and it's, it's a good yard to work in. Hurricane Fly is obviously the apple of everyone's eye here. Have you been really pleased with the way his preparation has gone so far? Yeah, he seems to be really well. Um, obviously, there's a little doubt over him in Leperstown the last day, but he seems really well since. Um, Gail Carlisle looks after him; is very happy with him, and Paul Townend rides him every day, and he seems happy enough. So. That's about as close as I get. I won't get on him again until Champion Hurdle Day. And less, less than three weeks ago, now is it just a case of taking him over until the big day? You know, he's a few bits of work to do. Um, you know, he was obviously let down after winning the Irish Champion Hurdle and he'll be built back up now, but fingers crossed it'll all go well. And what about the novice hurdlers this year? They look a great bunch. Will he, I think, had something like 20 odd entered in, in at least one of the novice hurdles. Have you been able to sort them out well enough at this stage? I, I don't know. There's obviously a fair chance you'll pick a wrong one with them because there's so many of them, such, 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 such depth. But, um, you know, I guess with novices, they'll have to go there, you know, travel, handle the atmosphere, handle the, handle the track and then um, hopefully put their best foot forward. But we seem to have a, a couple for each race, so they would have a, a good chance. So you're hoping maybe one, if one can win and two will be great, three be brilliant. I suppose Vautour is the topical one. He really impressed a lot of people at Leopardstown, you included, obviously. Yeah, he was very good and he beat the Tullow Tank, but Victor Brave was equally as good the week before in Pontersound when he beat Lieutenant Colonel. Um, you know, they're... they're you know, they're two very good horses, and Val Sarlito is there as well. Obviously, he's a Jigginstown horse, so Brian Cooper will be riding him. But, you know, they're, they're three very good horses. And Briar Hill was another one I just wanted to touch on. We haven't seen him for a while, but has he been doing things right at home since we yeah, saw him? he that? looks great. He's in really good form. Um, you know, he's three from three over hurdles. He won a maiden in Wexford, won the grade one in Navin, and was good in this. Um, he'll appreciate a bit drier ground. Um, he looks really strong, and Willie's very happy with him. And I know that's your favourite type of horse, isn't it? The one who doesn't worth a house down at home, but they really bring their A game to the track. Yeah, there's nothing worse than a morning glory. All he ever seems to do is disappoint you with a horse that's not so flashy at home. He seems to keep surprising you, and surprises, good surprises are nice. Was chasers wise again strong bun champion fever we haven't seen him for a while but that's not a worry is it no no he's in great form um obviously with felix younger jacques adam bally Kessy. you know we've, we've a few good novice chasers as well and the article looks the race for champagne fever willie was saying after he ran last time you were keen to drop back and trip it didn't do any harm last year did it no um you know i suppose I, that's what i keep going back to if you look at last year's supreme novices his beats jet ski my tend to yours they're both in the reckoning for the champion hurdle um you know he's a good jumper of fence I think he's no problem staying, but I think he's a he's a great cruising speed, and um, you need both speed and stamina to win an Arkle. So, you know, King King was second and one, War of Attrition was second and one. Um, you know, stairs can go close in it, and I think he has that bit of pace as well. And obviously, it's a long way down the road, but I mean, all being well, this is a horse you'd like to think would be in a Gold Cup further down the line, isn't he? You'd be hoping so. But look, novices have to progress, the wheels have to stay on, and they have to be lucky. So. Uh, we'll try and get this season out of the way first. That's the way. And Bally Casey is going the staying route this year. I suppose he, he had a bit of living up to do to his reputation, didn't he? He finally went and won that grade one though last time. Yeah, I guess we had him talked up, but uh, talked up. But um, you know, he was good in Leperstown. He beat Don Cossack and Carlingford Lock. Um, you know, he did a minor setback after Navin when he won his beginners over two miles. But look, he's never won over three on the track. But we think he's crying out for it. So hopefully we're right. And Ruby, Annie Power is a name that's been on a lot of people's lips over the past couple of months. You're probably getting tired about talking about her at this stage, but how do you see her chance at Cheltenham if she lines up in, in the World Hurdle, say, for example? I don't know what she's going to line up in, but she's a, she's a very good mare. Um, 
you know, she jumps well, she has pace, she's boodles of stamina, um, she's lots of potential, we've never gotten to the bottom of her, her form is quite solid, she's beaten Zach Kander twice in, in England this year, um, she won over two miles and got Doncaster, albeit in a, in a quite lesser race, but um, you know, she looks really well, she's going the right way and fingers crossed, whatever race she goes for in Cheltenham, the real Annie Powell turn up. As per usual, we haven't seen Cavega for a long time, but is she where Willie wants her at the moment? Have you had a chance to sit on her at all? And I don't ride her very often. Um, you know, Jack Madden rides her a lot, and uh, David Casey and, and Katie Walsh actually uh, ride her most of her work, but um, she's in really good form, and uh, yeah, it'd be, just, it'd be unbelievable if she could go back and win a 6 mares hurdle. Even just to get to Cheltenham six years in a row with a chance in a race like that is something special, isn't it? It is incredible, but um, I'd say she's in good nick. No more. And Ruby, you got a nice surprise in the bumper last year, obviously, with Briar Hill. Is there any chance of something similar this time? A couple of nice horses, obviously. Yeah, obviously, Shane Sill and Black Hercules looked the big two. They're both, obviously, Graham Wiley's, but um, they, they looked the main two at the minute. But um, I'll take whatever Patrick discards. <laughs> <laughs> and looking at the team overall, we mentioned, we mentioned at the start, I mean, it's a very, very powerful squad going there. I mean, is there a realistic target, or do you just hope to get on the board and anything after that's a bonus? Cheltenham, I mean, if you can ride a winner, it's great. But I suppose in the... I've been fortunate enough to ride that many winners there now that there's expectation for me to ride winners. But, um, you know, get one out of the way and take whatever comes after that. But, look, we've a lot of a lot of horses, a lot of strength, great depth to it, and um, plenty of chances. So, hopefully we'll get lucky somewhere along the way. And we're in that nasty period now where jockeys, if they were to pick up a suspension or an injury or something like that, it could be catastrophic. I mean, you can't do anything differently, though, can you? You can't start trying to mind yourself. No, you can't. As soon as you start doing that, you probably will get hurt. But, um... No, I mean, obviously, you're always trying to ride within the rules, so you probably pay a little bit more attention to that. But, um, look, injuries are unfortunate. Whenever they happen this time of the year would be the most unfortunate, but um, hopefully it won't happen. And are you going to have the, the whole crew over for the week? Is Gillian and the girls going to travel over? Yeah, the girls won't be coming. They're a bit young. I don't think Chetland's a place for them. But, um, yeah, Gillian might be there a couple of days. Um, she's due at the end of March, so or middle of April, early April. So how many days she... Inflicts upon herself, I don't so know. you not to send her into early labours? Because uh, I hope I don't, but um, how much of it she's up for, you know, she's a, a stronger person than me to be even contemplating. Maybe good luck over there. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, Gary.